Act three, Burnham, Spock, and Gant beam onto the bridge of the uh, abandoned Section 31 vessel wearing EV suits in case the life support system gets shut down by the angry AI again. <laughs> Gant points Burnham to the main interface while Spock goes to check the bridge systems. However, Gant only has limited access to the ship systems. Spock suggests relaying to Discovery for assistance in deep data recovery. Gant objects saying that if a control realizes they what they were doing, they were as good as dead. Burnham assures him that they could disguise it as a routine diagnostic procedure. Then the ship suddenly powers up and jumps to warp. The, the fact that they did not have, have control in navigation seems to indicate that control is aware of their presence. <laughs> Maybe, you know. In Discovery Sick Bay, Reno enters, holding up a finger, loudly declaring that she needed medical attention. Dr. Colbert goes over to her and quickly diagnoses a hangnail. <laughs> Reno explains that she was, uh, that it was one of two uh, things impeding her work, the other being an idiot who had recently come back from the dead and whose name rhymes with poo. <laughs> <laughs> she adds that he was an engineer, or that she's an engineer, not a poet. Colbert agrees uh, with her as he sprays the hangnail with an analgesic, calling it medical attention. Reno remarks that she understands how he got on so well with Stamets. Colbert asks how long they had been friends. Reno replies they're not but that they were working together and Stamets needed to be on his A game since the future of all sentient life was at stake. Colbert notices Reno's wedding ring. The engineer explains her wife was a Soyuzian and went totally bananas during the planning. Colbert admits that he understood the micromanagement quite well and they explained the rule set for their respective weddings. Reno mentions a set of rules for apparel for guests under 10 and non-denominational shuttle parking. <laughs> <laughs> While Colbert mentions a, a do not playlist for the DJ and acceptable guest but calligraphic fonts. Uh, but Reno gets a laugh out of him when she mentions vegan steak. When Colbert asks where her wife was now, Reno tells him that she had been killed during the Klingon War and remarks on how people like she and Colbert met people like her wife and Stamets. She then reminds Colbert that he had a second chance and that it would not last forever. With a pat on his shoulder, she tells him not to screw it up. Now, Chris, I got to tell you, one time years ago, when uh, gay marriages were still fairly young, mm -hmm. uh, we lived in a part of the state that's called Santa Cruz. It's a very, 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 very liberal city. Uh, like it's Most of its city government has been communist since the 1970s. Pot has never been an enforced uh, thing there unless the DEA came through for some reason. And I ended up going to a lesbian wedding a lesbian voodoo inspired wedding. Huh. <laughs> and as we were headed there, my ex-wife said something about, well, you know, they're, they're all vegetarian. I was well, how, how that can't be right. Right. Cause they're, they're, you know, it's a voodoo inspired wedding. So I said something to the groomish or uh, it's not the right term. But one of the wives who was the more butch of the two who dressed the more manly of the two, I said something to them. I said, so is there, you know, this is like a legit question. I'm like, so is there like, you know, their blood sacrifice? <laughs> they go, well, no, we're all vegan. How can you do voodoo vegan? That's not right. And then when the food was served, you had your choice of polenta, vegetarian or vegan style. Mm. It was one of the most catastrophic things I had ever seen. I got so drunk that day. <laughs> Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. So when I read that thing, vegan steaks back there, I, uh, well, I had a flashback for a moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I sympathize with the guests of that wedding. 